Good morning, everyone. As you may have probably noticed uh, during the discussion you may have had uh, here uh, in this symposium, that we in Airbus are uh, quite very proud of uh, one of our latest aircraft generation, which is the A350. I am so sure that uh, many of you here in the assistant, including, for instance, uh, Captain uh, uh, Doyle from uh, Delta, can share their enthusiasm to get such an aircraft in their fleet. The A350 introduces uh, several new functionalities that are beneficial on many aspects. But having such great feature on the A350 does not mean that the other Airbus fly-by-wire model do not take the advantage of these new developments. Indeed, Airbus also continues to improve the current existing system on the other fly-by-wire aircraft. The opportunity was taken with the A350 development to further improve the systems, enhancing by, by this way both the safety aspect and the pilot experience as well. Several improvements have been ad added or reinforced with the A350, such as an uh, increased assistance for the crew with an extension of the uh, availability domain for the autopilot, also an improvement of the availability of the air data information that are displayed uh, on the PFD for the crew. As well, we've made less probable the loss of the uh, flight control normal low, uh, including the uh, flight control uh, protections. The A350 are also fitted with the runway over run protection system. And regarding the uh, trajectory and energy management, uh, they can have the uh, go around, the soft go around function, as well as a different landing system that uh, Xavier and Julien have just talked about. So considering the A350 as our reference today, uh, the aim is to bring this enhancement to the other fly-by-wire aircraft as to get them as close as possible to that standard. There are many different projects currently ongoing within Airbus on that purpose, and we will not detail them all today. Today, the goal and the aim of this presentation is uh, to bring some light on some of the functionalities that will be available in the short mid-term basis for you. So we will review today uh, two main parts. The first one is the improvement of the resilience uh, of the system in the case of unreliable uh, speed situation. The second part will deal about uh, the increased robustness of the autopilot. And finally, we'll have a word on the schedule and the mixed fleet aspect as well. So let's start with the system resilience to the unreliable speed situation. And let's start with a quick review of the A350 design. It is twofold. On the A350, uh, there is um, the introduction of a new backup speed and backup altitude that can be displayed on the PFD uh, to replace the information usually coming from the ADRs. To do so, it uses two sets of parameters, the first one being uh, um, a set of three parameters uh, which are the angle of attack, the load factor, and the weight that are used to be re-injected into the lift equation to get an estimation of the current aircraft speed. Also, the second set of parameters uh, are information coming directly from the engine where there are pitot and static probes that are normally used for the engine operation, but that can be transmitted to the aircraft system in order to help the computation of the backup speed and backup altitude. The second system, the second evolution on the A350 is an automatic detection of the Euroneus speed, as well as an automatic reconfiguration of the uh, aircraft displays. The um, Aeroneus detection of, uh, sorry, the automatic detection of Aeroneus airspeed is based by comparing and monitoring each of the four different uh, airspeed value coming from the three ADRs lines and the fourth one, which is the ISIS one on the A350, and with the fifth um, speed, which is the backup speed. The reconfiguration is uh, automatically done by the system 
meaning that the flight crew does not have to um, use any selector to switch between each of the airspeeds. So this is the A350 design. So what can we do for the other fly-by-wire aircraft on that matter? On the A380, as you may guess, uh, the system similarities are, are the system are quite similar between the A380 and the A350. This means that it will be possible in the near future to uh, converge the A380 design toward the A350 design with the um, introduction of the two functionalities I've just presented, which are the backup speed and backup altitude and the automatic detection and automatic reconfiguration. Regarding the A320 and A330, uh, as you may also guess, the system similarities are uh, a, a bit less similar and uh, so that it will be possible to push uh, the design up to a certain level with some uh, restriction compared to the A350 design. So let's start from what is existing on the A320, A330. This is what you all know, the backup speed scale that can replace at some time the um, uh, speed coming from the ADR. On the recent aircraft, uh, the backup speed sp scale can be displayed on a reversible manner thanks to the use of two push buttons installed in the front panel. This is already existing on the uh, recent aircraft. This backup speed scale will be replaced by a backup data, backup speed and backup altitude in the same manner as the A350, using uh, the same set of parameters, which are the angle of attack, the load factor and the weight in the, in the same principle as the A350. Thanks to that um, backup speed, it is possible to display, as you can see on the PFD, some characteristic speeds as a backup. So the VLS and the green dot will be possible to be displayed. A difference from the A350 design is that uh, the um, information from the engine are technically not possible to be retrieved by the uh, aircraft system, meaning that uh, the aircraft altitude or the backup altitude that will be displayed on the PFD will remain the GPS altitude as it is currently the case with the backup speed scale. However, this system will be able to compute a backup MAC as well as a backup vertical speed. So this is the first uh, main functionality that will be added. With the same modification, we will provide an enhancement on the airspin monitoring in the same way as the A330, sorry, <laughs> it is based on the comparison and individual monitoring of the three ADR sources and the backup source. Thanks to that uh, enhanced and robust monitoring, it will uh, greatly assist the flight crew in their identification of the reliable speeds and the faulty speeds and uh, assist them for the troubleshooting. To do so, it will directly uh, trigger some ECAM alert that will, will very clearly show to the flight crew what is the current status of the different speed in the aircraft. In addition to that ECAM alert, it will also flag the associated uh, speed on the PFD if they are selected to be displayed. In accordance with the ECAM philosophy as well, uh, this uh, ECAM alert will be associated with actions, uh, essentially for uh, display reconfiguration and possibly with some system limitation, if applicable. Finally, of course, all that uh, information will be always available for the crew to be uh, uh, consulted on the uh, ECAM status page. So we've seen that um, the speed monitoring is based on the principle of the ECAM alert and ECAM action. This means that in the very vast majority of unreliable speed events, the flight crew will not have to use the uh, courage procedure for the unreliable speed uh, uh, indication procedure. The system will be uh, able to identify the different status of the uh, speed that can be either reliable 
or fault or incertain if there are some inconsistency between some uh, speed and the backup uh, speed is not uh, available to uh, determine, differentiate the which one is the good one. So at the end, there will be only one very remote case where the flight crew will have to apply the courage procedure, which is a case where the three ADR speeds will uh, be flagged as faulty or uncertain, and the backup speed is not available. Of course, the philosophy for the application of this courage procedure will remain exactly the same as the one that is currently existing with the same memory item and the same philosophy. Finally, another important feature on that uh, monitoring is that it is a continuous monitoring, meaning that um, if the system has flagged as faulty uh, a speed, it will continue to monitor it in order to be able to revalidate it in the case that it comes back to our normal status. To revalidate it, it uses an independent source, which is the backup speed, using parameters totally independent from the PITO sources. And it will be <coughs> sorry, able to upgrade the level of the reliable speed up to possibly a normal status if all of the ADR speed are back to um, normal status. This means that the uh, flight crew awareness is greatly enhanced as they are aware of the change of the, air of the aircraft speed as soon as there is any change. So this is all for the um, enhancement of the availability or uh, speed uh, information for the crew. Let's have now a quick word about the um, improvement of the robustness of the autopilot function. In order to enhance the availability of the autopilot, we've put in place in Airbus um, a, a global and pragmatic approach that is based on, on the collection of in-service data um, showing some disconnection of the autopilot. And we've made the analysis to find out what were the main causes of this uh, autopilot disconnection and what were their rate of occurrences. Based on that, we've defined uh, different types of solutions. Some are called quick win solution, meaning that we can implement them quite qu quickly without a lot of modification. And some are more on the long-term uh, solution. So talking about that kind of low-hanging fruits, um, we've identified some non-critical single failures. I won't go into too many details on that, but it's just failures that um, at the time being um, lead to an automatic disconnection of the autopilot. But thanks to a new assessment, uh, they may not uh, automatically to a disconnection of the autopilot, meaning that the uh, availability of the autopilot can be uh, enhanced thanks to that. Another functionality um, will be the um, activation of the flight envelope protection with the autopilot engaged. On that function, um, let's have a quick word as well. The aim is to uh, enable the flight control protection to activate without automatically disconnecting the autopilot, meaning without uh, forcing the flight crew to revert into a manual control of the aircraft. As you can see on the uh, screenshot of the uh, A350 PFD, the autopilot is engaged while the speed is below the V-alpha prot, meaning that the high angle of attack protection is activated. And the flight crew is informed of that um, activation of the protection thanks to a new third line message in the FMA, that is AP in prot. Its aim is also to make the crew aware that in the temporary period where the flight control protection are activated, the flight guidance orders are not followed anymore by the system. On the other side of the um, project for enhancement of the autopilot, uh, we have another um, project that we call the uh, alternate autopilot and which aim is to uh, enhance the autopilot resilience to unreliable speed situation. So to do so, it takes the full benefit of the uh, airspeed monitoring function we've just talked about. 
in order to receive some uh, robust information regarding the reliable status of the uh, different speeds. Thanks to that, it will be able to maintain its assistance with fewer functionality, whatever the speed of the aircraft are. To do so, it will revert into different sub-modes with fewer functionalities if needed, and it will be also possible to revalidate the different uh, uh, autopilot uh, modes up to possibly a normal status. Let's see a bit how it will work. So let's consider that uh, starting from a status where we have all the ADR speeds available, we lose uh, the or one uh, of the speed coming from one pitot is a flag that's faulty by the system. In this case, the autopilot, the standard autopilot, which is the, the one that is currently existing on the NEA 330 is able to maintain all of, its of all of its functionalities. But let's now imagine that a second ADR speed is tagged as faulty. So the speed monitoring function will indicate that through an ECAM alert to the crew. And in that case, the, uh, on existing aircraft, the autopilot would disconnect. Thanks to that new function, it will not disconnect, and it will be able to continue its operation based on one single ADR because th the information it receives is uh, confirmed as very robust. It will have almost all of the functionalities of the standard autopilot. Let's now imagine that we lose a third ADR. So the three ADR speeds are not available anymore for the system, but the backup speed is confirmed to be still reliable. So the alternate AP will degrade into an, another sub-mode where it will operate only based on the backup speed. As you can imagine, it will have less functionalities. In that case, it will not be able to uh, use any managed guidance coming from the FMS, but all the different selected modes will be still available for the flight crew. And finally, in the very remote case where the backup speed is not available, the crew will be also informed thanks to a specific ECAM warning, and the um, autopilot will still be able to provide some assistance to the crew if they wish by maintaining the aircraft on a level flight with a new FMA uh, submode, uh, vertical submode, which is a verti VS plus zero, on heading or track uh, for the lateral mode, and the thrust will be adapted to maintain a fixed target speed. As we have just said before, uh, this system also takes the advantage of the different uh, upgrade, so meaning that if the speeds are back to a reliable status, the autopilot will automatically revert, upgrade its submode up to uh, other submodes, up to a normal uh, standard autopilot if possible. So this is all uh, for the different autopilot uh, announcement of the robustness function that we wanted to detail to you today, but they will be available in a short mid-term. But as you understood, there will be also further development in order to continue to increase uh, the availability of the autopilot. Okay, maybe the question you have now is, okay, these are great features. Uh, I can't wait, but uh, when will have uh, when will I have these uh, features available and what do I do with my current aircraft that are not, have not that function? Okay, so just a quick word on the um, schedule aspect. As you can see for uh, the different function we've, um, I've presented you today, uh, there will be available that certification are targeted by the end of 2019 or beginning of 2020 globally. As soon as this function will be certified, they will be uh, introduced uh, in uh, production aircraft as a basic function, and uh, service built-in will be issued in order for you to be able to retrofit on your aircraft. Of course, there will be some technical requirements 
uh, to implement that SB. For instance, uh, in the enhanced uh, air data availability function for the A320-330, you will need to have the reversible backup speed scale, meaning the, at least the IIS-2, and uh, the FACC standard on the A320 or high-speed FCDC um, for the A330. I will not get into the detail of all the different technical uh, requirements, but globally, uh, the aim of Airbus is to make them available as much as possible on your aircraft. Regarding the mixed fleet aspect, as you understood, our aim is to converge toward a single common functionality. So it means that we will maintain the compatibility with the previous standard uh, as they will, these new functionalities will, will provide either an alleviation of the crew workload or um, some additional guidance for the crew in the case of unusual situation and also it will enhance the awareness of the situation. So this means that if these functions are available, they will improve the assistance provided to the crew for the management of the flight. If they are not fitted, the pilot will continue to operate the aircraft the same way as they already do. It means also that in terms of training, it implies training requirements that will be based on knowledge only and that will not require any specific skill. On top of that, there is no change in the philosophy of handling any abnormal situation and there is no specific action to be aware of. <coughs> to conclude this presentation, it is clear for us, and I hope that further to that presentation it is a bit clearer for you as well, that um, Airbus referential in terms of aircraft system is the A350. It consists of the introduction of new functionalities consists of an increase of the system resilience either to uh, external factors or internal failure. And it consists with a further developed assistance for the flight crew in the management of the flight. The A350 system continue to evolve as well as uh, Xavier has presented you um, earlier this morning for instance with the harmonized uh, PFD and the um, existing fly-by-wire system also continue to improve. So we've taken the commitment to use the A350 as a referential and to boost our other fly-by-wire model up to that standard. This will imply some incremental development as we have seen on the, on the schedule uh, planning, depending on the complexity of the different solution to be implemented. The ultimate goal being that all these aircraft have as much as possible the same capability and that they provide greater resilience and greater support to their crew. Thank you.